This is Dr. Joshua Cooper, and I'd like to speak with you a little bit about Wolff-Parkinson-White syndrome, also known as WPW. Let's start by thinking about the normal heartbeat. The heart has a top and a bottom half, and normally they beat in sequence. The top half squeezes first, and the bottom half squeezes second. Well, what makes that happen? There's an electrical system that is responsible for sending signals across the heart to make it squeeze in that sequence. Every heartbeat starts electrically in the top part of the heart in an area called the sinus node. That acts as the natural pacemaker spot that starts each heartbeat. It sends an electrical signal across the top chambers of the heart so that they squeeze first. See these oval things here that I drew in the center of the heart? Those represent heart valves, and in addition to functioning in a way to let blood flow only forward from top to bottom, they also serve as electrical barriers, preventing electrical signals from simply passing from top to bottom of the heart. However, there's an area in the center of the heart called the AV node. A stands for atria, the top part of the heart. V stands for ventricle, the bottom part of the heart. That acts as an electrical bridge to allow signals to cross that barrier and pass from top to bottom. But in addition, the AV node serves a little bit like a toll booth to slow down signals so that the top and bottom parts of the heart beat one at a time and not together quickly. Once the signal travels through that AV node, it travels through a special fast electrical tree to make the bottom chambers squeeze together. When we record an EKG of the heart, we see little squiggles that represent the top and bottom parts of the heart electrically. Well, what about somebody who has WPW? Somebody who was born with WPW, in addition to all the electrical parts of the heart that I just spoke about, has an additional electrical bridge or connection that links the top to the bottom part of the heart in a separate place aside from the AV node. It's called an accessory pathway, and again, it acts as a second connection. A good analogy to think about the electrical system of the heart is to think about it as a highway. I mentioned before that the AV node serves as a toll booth that slows down signals as they travel from the top atria down to the bottom ventricles. Well, to continue this analogy, if somebody has WPW, or an accessory pathway, it kind of is like having an easy pass lane, a rapid way of bypassing that AV node toll booth to get signals from top to bottom of the heart. So somebody who has a WPW pathway, in addition to signals traveling from top to bottom through the AV node, has signals also going down that extra connection. The bottom chambers are therefore electrically stimulated in two ways, through the normal way and through the accessory pathway. And as a result, their EKG looks a little bit different. The top and bottom chambers are still shown on the EKG, but there's a little extra squiggle here shown in pink that reflects the part of the bottom chambers that's electrically stimulated by the accessory pathway. It's interesting to note that no two people are exactly the same when they have WPW. Some people have an extra connection, an accessory pathway, that's like a two-way street, and it allows signals to travel both downward and upward. And those people have an EKG that looks the way I drew it here, labeled WPW, with the little extra squiggle shown in pink, so that when they get an EKG in the office, we can tell that they have an accessory pathway. Other people, their accessory pathway acts like a one-way street, and usually that means it travels only in the backwards direction from bottom to top. And because that electrical pathway cannot send signals downward during the normal heart rhythm, when that type of person gets an EKG, it'll actually look normal, and their doctor will not be able to tell that they have an accessory pathway. And in fact, they would not be labeled as having WPW because their EKG looks completely normal. Also, the pathway can be different from one person to another in terms of its location. Some people have an accessory pathway over on the left side of the heart, connecting the top left to the bottom left chamber. Some people have an accessory pathway that's over on the right. And some people have an accessory pathway that's right in the center, very close to the normal AV node electrical system. 
Here's an example of somebody with an EKG and WPW who's in their normal rhythm, also called sinus rhythm, and the way that their doctor will know that they have WPW is looking at the shape of that squiggle, that little extra squiggle, which of course is not shown in pink on a normal EKG, is obvious to somebody who's trained to read EKGs. The squiggle's called a delta wave, and so anybody with WPW who's told they have a delta wave, that's what their doctor's talking about. Depending on where the accessory pathway is located and how fast a pathway it is, their delta wave may look a little bit different from one person to another. The delta wave can be small, medium, or large. In some people, their WPW on the EKG is very subtle and might be missed. In other people, it's very obvious. In cardiology, the reason we care if somebody has WPW is because that extra electrical connection can allow the heart to go into some abnormal rhythms that can cause symptoms. One symptom that people can have is from a sudden fast heartbeat that's called SVT, or very specifically in people with WPW, the term for that type of SVT is called AVRT. We have a lot of big medical terms, but the point is, is that having an extra electrical connection can allow that person to have their heart suddenly race. Here is an EKG of somebody who starts in normal rhythm, who suddenly goes into a fast heart rhythm called SVT, and they may feel this as palpitations or a sudden fast heartbeat. The sudden fast heartbeat of this type is due to the heart going into an electrical short circuit. What's actually happening here with these two bridges is that the heart gets tricked into sending a signal down the normal route and then backwards up the extra route. Notice that somebody who has each type of pathway, the two-way street and the one-way street, can both have this type of fast rhythm called SVT. And again, it can start all of a sudden and make somebody feel like their heart's beating out of their chest very quickly. Often it's mistaken as a panic attack or anxiety, but if somebody feels their heart racing fast, we certainly have to rule out in the medical community that they may be having an actual arrhythmia that requires treatment. Here's an EKG of somebody who has WPW and SVT. In this case, their heart is racing at 130 beats per minute, and we can see the bottom chambers in those big squiggles going at that fast pace. If you happen to have symptoms while an EKG is being done, then we're likely to catch this kind of rhythm. One of the problems when people have this rhythm, though, is that it often stops on its own before somebody gets to an office or an emergency room, and then when an EKG is done, the healthcare provider might say, well, it looks normal, there's no problem here, but they didn't actually catch the problem when it was occurring. So an EKG is only as good as catching the rhythm while it's happening. There are different types of heart monitors that your doctor may prescribe to you, or you may use your own uh, a smart watch or smartphone to catch a heartbeat while it's going fast, which can give your doctor a clue that you may be having SVT. And just as quickly as it starts, these rhythms typically stop as well. Here's somebody who's in their SVT fast rhythm, and all of a sudden it just stops and goes back to normal. It's not uncommon for the resting heart rate to be a little faster when an episode stops because you're revved up on adrenaline, having felt your heart go so uncomfortably fast, and it's worrying to many people as well, that your adrenaline system kicks in, and when the rhythm stops, your heart rate may not be back at its slowest pace until a little more time passes and you feel more comfortable. Another problem that can happen in people with WPW, and this part is true for only those who have the two-way street kind of WPW, is that if somebody has atrial fibrillation, which is a common rhythm that occurs more often as we get older, the extra connection can lead to additional problems. Here is a heart that is normal going into atrial fibrillation, where the top chambers just start beating in a very irregular chaotic pattern, almost like the top chambers are having a seizure. The AV node, because it acts like a toll booth, regulates how many signals can get from top to bottom. And when the bottom chambers squeeze in an irregular pattern during atrial fibrillation, some people may notice that irregular pattern and other people might not. The AV node in different people 
allows signals to pass from top to bottom at different rates. So some people, when they go into atrial fibrillation with a normal heart, may have a pulse that's irregular, but not that fast. Other people may have their AV node allow signals to travel through much faster, and those people will more likely feel their heart palpitating or beating irregularly when they're in atrial fibrillation. Again, this rhythm is not specific to people with WPW because atrial fibrillation is very common in people with normal electrical systems other than the atrial fibrillation rhythm itself. Here is an EKG showing somebody with a normal heart without WPW having atrial fibrillation. And notice how the bottom chambers, the ventricles shown by the big spiky things are beating very irregularly throughout this EKG. This person's pulse rate is about 125 on average, but again, some of the fast heartbeats are faster than others. Here's where the problem can come in, in somebody who has WPW, the two-way street kind of connection, and developing atrial fibrillation. Because that extra connection does not act like a toll booth and slow down signals, now when the top chambers are fibrillating and racing super fast, that accessory pathway can dominate and allow signals to travel from top to bottom much faster than in the normal heart where WPW is not present. So here's an example of somebody with WPW who has atrial fibrillation. Their bottom chambers can race incredibly fast, even going well over 200 beats per minute, if their WPW connection is of the type that allows signals to travel that quickly, which is not uncommon for people with WPW. Here's an EKG of somebody with atrial fibrillation and WPW with their heart rate beating at 254 beats per minute on average. When the heart goes this fast, the blood pressure can drop dramatically and people can feel very lightheaded or even faint. This can be a dangerous rhythm in somebody with WPW, even while atrial fibrillation without WPW usually is not so dangerous because the pulse rate can't happen this quickly. Well, when we go back to our analogy, thinking about that easy pass fast lane, how would you regulate signals going from top to bottom in the presence of WPW? Well, if this were a highway, we could just dig it up and get rid of that lane. And then all the cars would have to travel only through the AV node toll booth. Well, we don't use tools that big or that destructive in the heart, but we have a way of getting rid of an accessory pathway permanently, kind of like digging up the easy pass lane. It's called a catheter ablation. Ablation means that we put a little thin wire, usually from a vein in the leg, up into the heart, and we can deliver a little bit of electricity to heat up heart muscle in a very, very precise way to permanently damage and get rid of this extra fiber, this extra electrical connection, thereby permanently curing WPW. Here is a catheter being threaded up in the heart, delivering a little electrical signal, and it burns the electrical pathway permanently and gets rid of it. We have very specialized tools in our EP lab, the place where we do our electrical procedures, to very, very precisely pinpoint where an accessory pathway is located to allow us to perform successful ablation, which again is curative. When we do this, the EKG will turn back to normal. That little delta wave will go away because there's no longer an accessory pathway allowing signals to travel from top to bottom. And likewise, if somebody's having palpitations, those will no longer occur because that short circuit can't possibly happen if the accessory pathway is gone. Here are some key points to remember about WPW. It's an electrical connection between the top and bottom parts of the heart that allows signals to travel quickly, either in one direction or in both directions. And if somebody has WPW visible on their EKG in normal rhythm, that means that their connection goes top to bottom, and usually it means it goes in both directions. It's something that you're born with, but it is not inherited, so it's not something that you'll pass along to a child. This extra connection can vary person to person by its location, left, right, or center, and also its electrical speed. It can cause this short circuit SVT arrhythmia that I demonstrated. And it also can allow people who develop atrial fibrillation to go really, really fast, which can be dangerous. 
It can easily be cured with an ablation procedure, which is often done in childhood if the problem is detected early. But if the problem is detected in adulthood, then we can perform this at any age. I hope you found that helpful about WPW. Thank you so much for watching, and please check out my Arrhythmia Education channel for other educational videos.